ready to flip. Thanks, baby. Flip the script. Flip, flip the script. Flip the script. Flip it on. Can you see that? Can you see that? You're cool, man. Don't worry about it, baby. Okay. Nice. Hi, I'm Sophie, welcome to The Badger Reviews, and this week we're gonna be reviewing Derry Girls, which has been massive on social media, online, in newspaper media outlets. It's just had a lot of hype around it, and we're gonna be checking out whether or not it meets its reputation. Will the following pupils please report to Sister Microsoft, Erin Quinn, Claire Devlin, Michelle Mallon, Orla McCool, and the wee English fella. Don't forget expelled. Nobody ever actually gets expelled. Wonder Golger hasn't even been expelled, and she's an ARA. So that's probably why. The show set in Derry or Londonderry in Northern Ireland during the Troubles, which was decades of kind of sectarian conflict between nationalists and unionists. And we do see glimpses of that where it's set in the sort of early to mid 90s, but at the same time, it kind of forms a general context in the background and doesn't really have much of an effect on the kind of particular situations in the episodes of the show. The girls Erin, Claire, Orla and Michelle are these kind of adorable caricatures of teenage female life, but really kind of ordinary life, which is nice because there's a real gap in kind of on-screen representation of young teenage female girls, just having fun, making really silly mistakes and not apologising for them or not learning from them either. And honestly, just having pure banter. <laughs> and I mean, that's wonderful. Who knew that girls could be so funny, honestly? Nobody's told us before. It seems like a kind of fatuous comparison, but obviously the in-betweeners springs to mind because that's what we kind of grew up with as teenagers in our generation. Um, but it's a kind of, it, it's more important because it represents slightly more interesting social issues. And obviously these girls come from a less privileged background and they have a little bit more to say. Instead of having a token Irish character, James, the kind of token Englishman, is the girl's appendage and he is constantly lampooned with a kind of ironic role reversal of racism, which, I mean, I'm, it's not my position to say, but I don't find it offensive. I find it really funny because I'm used to the sitcom tropes of having the fool be from somewhere else. Um, and in this case, it really works having a reverse dynamic. And that also applies to the kind of Northern and Southern Irish kind of conflict, comedic conflict between Erin's dad and her granddad. That works really nicely as well. You stay over too, son? Yes, I did, that's correct, sir. What, in your room? Have you nothing to say about this, you slack Southern shite? Look, love, I know the fella's gay. I'm not gay. But gay or not? You, you said I was gay. He's still a fella. There's still a good chance that he's a rapist. I mean, no offence, though. Recent trends in Irish comedy, such as Can't Cope, Won't Cope or The Young Offenders, show an interest in building a new kind of image of young Ireland, where not all Irish humour has to be about Irish people being the punchline of jokes from elsewhere. Derry Girls treats its themes of conflict and religion as a kind of setup for absurd humour, but they don't push it too far and they still remain really sensitive about the issues. Obviously, what's kind of ironic and funny is Sister Michael not being very nunnish, Father Peter having a crisis of faith. It's all those wonderful things that we saw maybe originally in Father Ted, which was the kind of first religious satire in that area as well. The show isn't anything particularly new. Obviously, it works best off the back of other sitcoms, kind of subverting the tropes that they've got or the structures that they've made. Um, but it is really well written and it's hilariously performed. The delivery from the cast is amazing. It's got plenty of callback and there's no canned laughter, so you can just enjoy it at your own pace. You can laugh whenever you want to for a change. <laughs> The show is female written and has like a largely female cast um, and Derry Girls, it shows us a world where women aren't just instruments to a kind of male experience and existence. This was a really enjoyable, low commitment, sympathetic and nostalgic show. I'm going to give it eight and a half. Um, it's definitely got room to grow and I think they might take it in some interesting directions in series two. What did you think of Derry Girls? Comment down below and we'll see you next week.